This is Stu Epperson from the Truth Talk podcast, connecting current events, pop culture, and theology. And we're so grateful for you that you've chosen the Truth Podcast Network. It's about to start in just a few seconds. Enjoy it and please share it around with all your friends. Thanks for listening and thanks for choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of Central North Carolina. Masculine Journey After Hours. A time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The Masculine Journey After Hours starts here now. Welcome to Masculine Journey After Hours. And we are talking about prayer. We're going to take it a little deeper and a little more seriously, evidently, after I've been woefully abused during the break um, <laughs> and by multiple members of the team. I won't say much about it other than that. Kind of like holding seven or eight corks under the water at the same time. Um, but we were talking about prayer and the intimacy <laughs> and prayer. And so I've had to put my defenses up. Um, and we've uh, been dissecting parts of it. I mean, it's such a topic that you could probably make several different pillars out of it couldn't you Rodney so, I think you would be the one to do that Danny yes now nah, I'm the blanket guy you know what I, mean? <laughs> I didn't even know what a pillow was other than the thing that you put a cover on on the bed um anyway the uh we'll play a couple more clips and, and dive in a little deeper so first clip we have is from you Mr. Smoot okay let's see Danny you asked like several questions when you're setting up this topic because it, it, it was great because you actually really had spent some time with this topic yourself as a prayer warrior and trying to figure out well somebody calls me this am I really what does it really mean to be a prayer warrior and you put out a great little thought as to where your, where your mind was at with this topic and it just hit me when you came and asked hey does 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 my prayer really matter? And all I could think of was this clip. So play it. Look, it just because we're losing doesn't mean it's all over. The Mohawks have beaten us the last 12 years. They're going to beat us again. That's just the attitude we don't need. Sure, Mohawk has beaten us 12 years in a row. Sure, they're terrific athletes. They've got the best equipment that money can buy. Every team they're sending over here has their own personal masseuse. Not masseur, masseuse. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. Do you know that every Mohawk competitor has an electrocardiogram, blood and urine tests every 48 hours to see if there's any change in his physical condition? <laughs> Do you know that they use the most sophisticated training methods from the Soviet Union, East and West Germany, and the newest Olympic power, Trinidad Tobago? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I tell you, it just doesn't matter. 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 Even if we win, if we win, ha! Even if we win, even if we play so far over our heads that our noses bleed for a week to ten days, even if God in heaven above comes down and points his hand at our side of the field, even if every man, woman, and child held hands together and prayed for us to win, it just wouldn't matter because all the really good-looking girls would still go out with a guy from Mohawk because they got all the money. <laughs> It just doesn't matter if we win or we lose. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So, Danny, does it matter? Absolutely. <laughs> and that's where you made me think, you know, as I was reading through your your topic, and I was like, there are some things that matter, some things that really, yes, they may matter, but they don't matter as much. So, you know, you have the, the general questions that come up when you're trying to, like, I'm a problem solver, 
you're trying to figure things out or you're trying to understand something like who, what, when, where, why, how, and those kinds of things. And again, back to our last topic is what is the topic? As long as we're focused on the who when it comes to prayer, I'm like, well, everything else really just doesn't matter. I mean, just be focused on the who. And that's Jesus for anybody who's got any, you know, questions as to the who is. You're focused on either the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit in your prayer time. And typically, we know, we pray to the Father through Jesus Christ. That's the typical pattern. But you can pray to any one of the Godhead, the Trinity. And if you're focused on him, you're going to be in the right place with your prayer because your attitude, like there, he talks about in the early night clip, you know, the attitude with an attitude like that. Well, attitude does matter, but it's not the most important thing because everything else will come right as you focus and pour into, into God. And that's the beauty of prayer is you can go to him, like we talked about earlier, driving in the car. You have a casual conversation. You can have a deep, intimate prayer, or you can have something that's structured and wrote out. Any one of these ways, there's nothing wrong. Um it's, it's, it's a matter of trying to go reach deeper with him in whatever situation you're in. Um, I pray, like when some of your guys' clips come up, and they're because they're, the, there's some great clips in this week because it's all about prayer. And during those times I'm listening to the clips, I'm like, just there's, there's things that will hit me, and I just, I just say you know a few words on, like, Lord, help me to learn how to pray better. You know, like, like in your clip, Danny, it's like, Lord, help me see you in this. There's just small things that come up, and if that's a part of like where Robbie's always like, don't hang up the phone. So that's really my most intentional thing right now is try not to go very long without praying. And if I'm in a situation, I'm in the middle of something, instead of beating myself up for, boy, I should have prayed before I got into this, just do it now. Just say a few words, you know, just to yourself real quietly. You know, you're in the middle of this. Lord, I don't know how to deal with this person. Help me. Just anything like that helps hugely. Just, I, you know, I like Harold's kiss method. Works for me. You know, I, I, there's, there's no reason to overcomplicate things here. And hey, I think, Rodney. Sam. Oh. Um, did you get, you prayed for shoes from my clip, right? Well, once it started happening, I'm like, I really do need a new pair of shoes. <laughs> the black sparkly part. <laughs> yeah. 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 Those are my favorite. But the, the flip side of that, Rodney, is the other side flip of the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> flip flops. Um, the, um, is that sometimes I think, sadly, as Christians, and I don't know if you guys have ever been in, I mean, y'all are saved and sanctified and all that good stuff. We still, still are from I'm last still time. All working right. on it, yeah. Uh, but uh, is that I wonder if my prayers matter. Will it really make a difference? And sometimes that, that comes from that beggar mentality, I think, that does it really, you know, maybe if Robbie prayed, it would be different because, you know, I I don't have what it takes. It, it, you see where that ties in? And yeah. so that that's kind of where when I first saw your clip, to be honest, I'm like, okay, where is he going with this? But when I played it, it made sense to me, and I thought – and you could you could play that on both sides of the coin. So yeah, with topics, with clips, everybody's wondering where is he going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens with most of us. Right? Okay, where is he going with this? Yeah. But anyway, Mister Robbie. Yeah. So when Danny brought up this topic, it actually caused a bit of a um, concern in my head because he he was like well, this idea of being a prayer warrior, and I've heard a lot of things said about that term, good and bad. And, and then Danny started to share his heart, which was really spectacular from my standpoint. He shared something that came out of his soul. And fortunately for me, my soul picked it up. He's talking about, he stole this from his pastor, but nonetheless, he had it. And it set up the whole topic perfectly for me. He, he said that God is not disappointed in us when we don't pray. He's disappointed for us. To Rodney's point that, you know, we've gone for the last 45 minutes or whatever period of time that we were not in communion with him, whatever that looked like, you know, in that particular moment. And, you know, I've actually quoted you probably 
10 or 15 times since you've said it. I, I used it in church last Wednesday night um, because I just think that's really relevant that, that God is sitting on the sidelines like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like when we often are waiting on for that call from our child that we've missed so desperately. So in this particular clip, this is one of my favorite love movies, you know, that, you know, people that know me, it's a Christmas love movie. What better could be for Robbie, you know? So in this particular one, you'll find it on Pure Flix. It's called Banking on Love. <laughs> and this clip, this couple um, hate each other, like in most, you know, love movies. They start off, you know, really at odds with each other. He is looking for a loan. She's his loan officer. He's at the bank. They're having a big discussion that he's not going to get this loan. He's not very happy with her. It's Christmas Eve weekend. And as he leaves the building, these robbers, rob, you know, go to rob the place and throw these two in the bank vault for the entire Christmas weekend. <laughs> so here are these two people that ate each other, and there they are. And she's engaged to be a guy that really, to a guy that doesn't really turn out to be what she needs. And through this, they begin to share one another's story. And in their own way, whether they realize it or not, they begin to pray with each other. In other words, we're really getting intimate here. We, we, we're really sharing it, what it is that we feel and what we're experiencing. And you can hear that begin to open up as they begin to pray with each other. All of a sudden, the thought occurs to her, hey, maybe we should pray, <laughs> which is where I find myself, oh, you know, 80 times every single day of my life. Oh, <laughs> I remember you, uh, Jesus. Oh man! So here you go. And then uh, let me just share also that 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 to me that all of a sudden the, the prayer is a lot more authentic based on how authentic they have been with each other prior to this. Good morning. Five thirty in the morning. Christmas Eve day. <laughs> We used to say that too when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm sorry I said those things to you. Which ones? That you have nowhere to be. I was just scared, but that's no reason to- My dad's in a hospital. I should be there. Why didn't you say anything? What difference would it have made? It's not like the door is gonna magically open because my dad's sick. He went in Thursday night. Stroke. Jack, I'm so sorry. Will you pray with me, Jack? Yeah, I don't know why we didn't say a prayer for God to get us out of here earlier. I'm asking to pray for what happens after. On the other side of those doors to have the courage and wisdom to live better and, and more fulfilling lives. What does that look like? Pray to discover it. Ask that the Lord show us his intentions for us to live without fear. I've lived my whole life waiting for the when. When I get the job, when I get married. Yeah, God wants us to live an abundant life now, not when to do more than just make the best of it. We pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So to add a little context, she is actually wanting to be, she works at the bank, but she's a stand-up comedian <laughs> that is afraid to get on stage. Um, and so the fear thing, this is real for both of them. And he is, he's been a mechanic or actually running his dad's shop but his dad's piece of work, um, you know, living his father's dream and failing miserably. A and so it's interesting to me as they began to get re real with each other, they really called each other out and then saw God in that, realizing you, you know, you could hear him say, yeah, that's right. God wants wants you to be a stand-up comedian. And she's saying, yeah, God doesn't want you. To, he, he's actually going to be a chef. Um, he, he wants you to be, in other, in other words, they were seeing the other person's glory and beginning to call that out in each other when they themselves were walking in fear along that and, and the intimacy of that. Um, 
spoke to the other thing that you had said that night as we had this discussion about all these things that didn't matter, as Rodney put it. Um, <laughs> but you had said something else that I thought was really, really good that you, you had said, you know how, you know, you're at work and all of a sudden, you know, you could be in the middle of the biggest meeting, but if it's your son or your daughter calling, if, you know, that's a call you're going to take, right? You're, you're going to drop whatever else is going on and you're going to take that call, hopefully for your wife, hopefully for the people that are close to you. You know, that's an important thing. And he said, that's how God feels about, and that's what Danny said. That's what God feels about me. Like he's going to, it's Danny calling. Whoa, hold the press. Danny's calling, okay? And, and, and of course, you know, of course, you know, that's, that's exactly, you know, how that works from my perspective. And, you know, that, that, that part that you said, that God's disappointed for me, you know, because how many times has he just given me something absolutely spectacular when I finally, you know, I'll have to give you a good example this, this after this morning. I'm just walking, you know, I'm doing my walk. The people that know me know that I've been walking lately for, I walk through the woods and, you know, I realize I've been walking for 10 minutes without a word to God. And I was like, you know, God, you know, it would be nice if, if you showed me something cool. <laughs> you know, because I see a lot of, you know, there's trees, you know. I spy something green, tree. Okay, another tree. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm like, it, you know, let me. And all of a sudden, there, there are these giant purple flowers that are on the top of these big, like, pool thing. They're, they're huge. And... Uh, they were, they were at the New Bank, uh, new River we went tubing a few weeks ago, and I noticed them, that they're really beautiful. Well, there are these two gigantic monarch butterflies, and I have pictures on my phone that God, I mean, these monarch butterflies were, you know, whatever, three inches long, and, you know, the tails that come way down, and they were on this big, huge purple flower, and these, and the the monarchs were yellow with this purple background, and I was just like, oh, God, man, that is just off the hook right there. And, and just right there, easy to see, and he's winking at me saying, yeah, yeah, Robbie, if you'd, um, you know, dialed 1-800-REMEMBER-ME, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, we could have been having a good time the whole way, but, you know, it's all right. It's all right. He's patient with me, you know. What a story. Um, the uh, I think about those things, and and you know, my wife tells a story of um, she was on. She does things like that, Robbie. Like God show off for me. That's one of her favorite things to do. And her and her mom were down at um, Emerald Isle fishing, and they're catching little pinfish and stuff like that. And she says, God, I'd really like to see the fish that eat these fish. <laughs> and she's got a picture of three, one of them's a hammerhead shark. These sharks are like eight to ten feet swimming right by the pier. And she's going, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so she'll probably kill me for telling that on the air. But, uh, you know, those are the things that, you know, we if we view God that way, I mean, it's, it's beautiful that, you know, he will show off. He will you know, engage us in, in many different ways. And, 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 you know, I think about all of us in this circle and how diverse we are. I mean, we are as different as day and night. And we we pick at each other and we do those kind of things. But, you know, we're all the same in the fact that, that we love Jesus and, you know, we're trying to do life the right way. And But our perspective on things is what I think makes us the strongest, and, you know, what I'd like for us to do in the time we've got left is is tell a prayer story, something you got. I mean, and, yeah, Wayne's got the mic. so <laughs> And he hasn't said anything. So and he backed time, away from it. So, off. <laughs> yeah, they accused me of getting away from the mic well, a while ago. So. I'll let him think because this sort of bounces off what Rob, Robbie was just talking about. Our prayers to me are the ones that, have meaning are the ones where God can love on us through them. The outcome rarely, like Robbie or Rodney, I'm messing it up too, like Rodney had, 
it really doesn't matter. The outcome of all of our prayers in the this life are not it's what happens here doesn't matter. I I thought of a very serious one and this was 20 something years ago when I was doing a year long uh, residency as a chaplain and me and two other chaplain buddies one one close friend Tom who a lot of guys here have met called us down to come pray with a couple. They were engaged. They were 18, 19 years old. She had cancer. And Tom said, you know, we really want to pray for this couple. They were they were godly young folks. They were going to be missionaries together after they were married. And everything about it screamed, oh, here's a miracle, and I'm going to get to be part of it. Yay me. Um, it was anticipating what God was going to do. And we prayed for him, and I was sure she was going to recover miraculously. And a week later, she died. And that hit me very hard. And God finally brought me around to the, she had her best outcome there. And I'm sure that young man came out of that well, but it was really a matter of changing my heart, not changing the circumstances. And God used it for me, and it really was a turning point in my prayer. Now, there's nothing wrong with praying for specific outcomes. Any prayer that is sincere, that you're taking something to God, he's listening to, and he's going to give you his very best whether it's the outcome you're looking for or better, the outcome he was doing. But the the story he said about the flowers, those some of the silliest prayers I've had have been the ones where his response was sort of like us guys picking on each other. Yeah, you know, we love each other, we laugh together, we have a good time. God likes that kind of interaction with his children. But, Jim, I had a similar story. Um, we had a neighbor who just had a newborn child years ago. Michelle and I hadn't been married too long, and I was on my way home from a meeting one night. And she says, how far away are you? And I said, about five minutes away. She said, well, come over to the neighbor's house. They had to take the baby to the hospital. And I won't ever forget this night. There's a back story to it that I won't get into. But the uh, so sh- sh- there was – Three or four other boys are already in bed, young young kids. And, and so Michelle said, I'm going home to take a bath. She said, well, you stay here, you know, with, with the boys. And they were asleep. There was a baby blanket on the couch next to me. And I picked that baby blanket up, and I was just impressed, like I'd never been impressed before, to pray. And because she said they took the baby out, and he was blue, wasn't breathing the whole nine yards. And I'm just traumatized by this. And I'm going, Lord, how – this is a child. This is a baby. You know, can you touch him? You know, and, you know, we started a prayer chain. And I will never forget what my friend Paul Trollinger, who passed away years ago, he come to me. He didn't know my story, but he said, God's going to do a miracle in this child for you. And I went, for me? You know, I can't believe that thing. Well, we had on Thursday the dad standing in our living room. I said, how's the boy? And they said, well, they diagnosed him with spinal meningitis, and they weren't giving him much hope. But he said yesterday, for whatever reason, the doctors can't explain it. Everything turned around, and he's going to be fine. There's not going to be any damage. And that little baby is now probably 17, 18 years old. And I used to see him when we live in Nashville, and I'd go, there goes my miracle child right there. Because what we do and what we say does matter. And what we pray does matter. And, you know, it, it, if you can't get anything else out of a topic like this, I would just beg you to realize that you do matter, that your life does matter. I don't care what it looks like. I mean, I've got a pretty good checkered past. But you know what? God uses everything. There's nothing wasted in his economy. And he loves to show off for us, and he loves to 
you know, he's God. There's nothing he can't do. And, you know, when we approach that, you know, not in arrogance, not in, you know, that, that's never been my heart on this topic, is, but the fact that I am more than an overcomer because I belong to him. And he redeemed me. He set me free. He, he did all those things. And before I get to preaching, they said I wouldn't say anything in the first show, so now. Uh, but, you know, those are the kind of things that, that, that do matter. And, you know, the, uh, and, and Jim, to your point a while ago, you know, the, the Bible study uh, and, and the prayer, which is more important, I think they go hand in hand. I don't think you get to know him without reading his autobiography. Just, as Robbie would say, just saying. But, you know, those kind of things, you know, I'm probably not going to be like Robbie and, and memorize the, the, Book of Psalms at this point, I think, or whatever, and you know, throw in throw in Song of Solomon while you're at it. He's already got that memorized. Yeah, you know, we give him a hard time about his Hebrew and stuff like that. that that's probably not going to be me, but there are times when I envy that kind of thing, and, and it's almost unhealthy. With you know, man, I wish I could be like that guy. But you know what? The biggest challenge I think we have is to be us. And so, anybody got anything? The uh, Sam, you got anything you want to say? No, I think it's just been a great topic to think about. There's a lot to take away from it and to let God work in it. You know, and that's where I guess I would, you know, want to challenge people. Yeah, so um, to be challenged, uh, we'll we'll have a boot camp and an entrenchment coming up. Well, I know we say that a lot, but we believe in them a lot. And the uh, – so – September 30th, October 1st is the entrenchment, and it is FRE free unless you're not fasting. And then the boot camp November, right before Thanksgiving. That's <laughs> what I go to. Yeah, yeah. there you go. The go to. 17th through the 20th. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And so go to our website and register, and we will see you at one of those, hopefully. And we'll see you next week. May the prayers be with you. This is the Truth Network.